Welcome back to the Alpha Gaming Channel. My name is Harris Heller. I am your stream doctor. And today, we're going to talk about how to make your transitions look like this. And like this. Pretty dope, huh? Look, there are lots of ways to add design to your stream to make it stand out, but there's one in particular that I think is very underutilized because it's a little more difficult to make. And you probably figured out which one that is because it's in the title and I just showed you what my transitions looked like. But yes, it's, it's transitions from scene to scene. But before we get started, let me say something that I say a lot. Design on its own is not enough to make a stream successful. You need a personality, you need content, but amongst a lot of different things, when people pop in your stream, for the first time, they're not gonna be there very long. And if there's something in there that they see and it makes them go, oh wow, maybe there's something to this stream, I should hang out here a little bit longer. Something like that is gonna give you a huge edge. It's gonna allow them to spend more time in the stream getting to know you and liking you and feeling a little bit of loyalty to you and coming back later. I would also like to start by saying that this video is proudly sponsored by the Hello Baby t-shirt. Currently available at redbubble.com, link down in the description below. If you're not already a part of the Hello Baby Twitch fam, you're welcome to join the Discord, buy the t-shirt, rep it. This, this actually says in Japanese, it's pronounced Hello Baby. I'm not a Japanese faker, I know my stuff. So if you wanna make people around you think that you're cultured when really you're just repping me, pick up the shirt. Anyway, let's get talking about your transitions. If you've been around Twitch, you've probably seen some well-designed streams that have decent transitions. Streams like Jason Sully or Fear Itself. They've both found designers that have created some really good looking transitions. And when you've got multiple setup scenes, it's important to have something like that. These are called stinger transitions and they're getting pretty popular. They work by creating an animation that has a transparent background. At some point, that animation needs to fill up the entire screen. And at that moment that it fills up the screen, the scenes behind it swap. It's a pretty simple concept, but when it's done right, it looks really cool. What we're gonna do today is not only take that already fairly advanced technique and push it one giant step further. You not only want your scene change to be all fancy schmancy, you want every single one of your elements in your stream, whether it's an overlay or a camera or whatever, to come in in a very conspicuous fashion. And essentially how it works is your computer tells OBS to activate particular animations and cameras and overlays in a particular order so when it's all compiled together, it comes together as a really cool transition. For example, the order of this one is play stinger transition, switch scenes, activate overlay animation, activate camera and overlay underneath said animation, deactivate animation. All right, I went over this pretty quick. So let's go step by step. Let's break everything down piece by piece. First things first, the way I'm able to create this sequence of events is with my Elgato Stream Deck. In the latest update, they added a cool new feature called multi-action, which is essentially just macro software. You're able to place the order in which you want it to do multiple things, including adding delays between those things. But if you don't have an Elgato Stream Deck, really any solid macro software will work just fine. So let's run over exactly what's happening here. In this transition, the first thing that the Stream Deck does is it switches from my camera scene to my gameplay scene, which initiates that blue shell stinger transition. Next, you can see there's a delay as it's waiting for the stinger transition to finish. The delay ends as the shell is taking up the whole screen. And to make this transition a little easier, rather than turning off the overlay and the cameras and everything that's there, I just duplicated my display capture and placed it in front of all those things so it looks like they're gone. So when the stinger transition finishes, it looks like it's nothing but my gameplay. After activating that extra display capture, it deactivates the next animation to make sure that once it activates, it starts from the beginning. Then there's another delay as so we wait for the stinger transition to completely finish, wherein it reactivates that animation that we see right here. Once it activates that animation, there's another delay while we wait for the animation to finish. This delay ends when the animation is in its full view stage, allowing us to get rid of that extra gaming layer and show our camera behind this image right now. The end of the animation fades out, revealing the cameras and overlays underneath it. This would be a little easier to understand if you were to look at it from a slightly different angle. 
So let's do that real quick. Scene change starts, activating the stinger. Delay, waiting for the stinger to fill out the whole screen. Extra gaming layer is activated, covering up the cameras and the overlays. Stinger transition finishes. The overlay animation begins and a delay starts to let the animation finish. Once the animation is full, the extra gaming layer disappears and the animation fades out, revealing the cameras and overlays underneath. This should make a little more sense now. This was the first transition I did. And so by the time I started working on my second one to go back to this scene here, I was able to smooth things out a little bit. Instead of having a stinger transition for the scene change, and animation for the little camera coming in from the side and another animation for the text coming in on the bottom. I made it all one giant animation that serves as the stinger animation. This completely eliminated the need for OBS to process multiple sources coming in and out. This is my entire stinger transition video file. While this is happening, the other sources are just chilling underneath it. So when this scene fades out, they're already there. Simplifying the process up quite a bit. Now, before you start going out and making these on your own, there are a couple roadblocks I'm gonna tell you about before you trip over them like I did. One, there will be a lot of troubleshooting. Expect to think that you got it perfect and then when you hit the transition button, your camera appears before the transition finishes or something's just not timed right and you have to go in and, and really nitpick the delays to get everything perfect. Make sure you don't overlook those tiny details. The whole purpose of these is to really draw in the viewer and, and bring them into the experience and uh, a detail missing or being out of place can ruin the whole effect. A difficult one is that you can't animate sources. You can't have your camera move in from the side of the screen, which is why you notice that whenever I have a camera moving in from the side, it's just static or the camera's not there. And then once it gets into place, it opens up and the camera appears behind it. Use little tricks like that to replace the fact that you can't move a camera and trick them to think that it actually is moving. Lastly, make sure you give your animations some wiggle room. Sometimes if you tell OBS to deactivate an animation at the exact same time as it's switching scenes, it hasn't finished switching the scenes and so the animation isn't there. Anyway, the point I'm trying to say is put delays on each side of every single thing that you put into your multi-action. Give your computer a little bit of wiggle room to finish this action before starting this action. Otherwise, sometimes certain actions just don't happen. You'll notice some of my actions like deactivating the animation are actually put in there twice. The redundancy just makes sure that it's ready to go. I'll make some cool transitions for those of you that are using my crystal overlay and I'll put it in the Dropbox just like I always do. These just take a little while to create and I'm competing in a tournament this weekend for PUBG. So be a little patient, subscribe to the channel, you'll know when it's up. But that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to jump in the Alpha Gaming Discord. We just launched a brand new Discord completely dedicated to this YouTube channel. There's a whole section entirely dedicated to Stream Doctor from uh, the operating room where you can get your questions answered to overlays and animations that are posted in there and places for you to put your clips of using my animations and overlays so I can take them and add them into these videos in the future. I would really like to put clips of your streams in these videos, so please join the Discord, put your favorite clips in there. Also make sure you hang out with the rest of the Twitch fam on my Twitch channel. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday in the evenings. Get to know the rest of us. But that's it for today. I hope this was helpful and as always, Happy streaming. Oh, he just what got wrecked. <laughs>